Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Petra Bakosova on the line, and she's CEO over at Hull Tactical. Petra, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. So a lot to talk about here today, so definitely going to get into a whole tactical and really where the investment thesis and what you're doing over there sitting at the intersection of technology and innovation. So maybe let's just start off. I want to go even before we get into whole tactical, like how did you get into finance? Like where did this begin for you? My journey to finance was probably pretty typical. Early on, discover you like math and you get a math degree and then you realize you don't want to teach. And then you figure <laughs> out the best, second best thing to do with a math degree is to get into finance. <laughs> so after, you, how did that start? Like, so you started getting into finance, like what was your first job in that industry? So my first job out of, I went straight from a bachelor's degree to getting a master's degree in financial mm. mathematics at the University of Chicago. So I was in Chicago, got recruited Amazing. to work for a futures a trading company, which there are plentiful here in Chicago. So my mm -hmm. first gig out of the school, I was working on market making algorithms for different commodity futures. Wow. What was that like? I've never, so I'm, I'm from the Midwest and I was in finance, but I ended up moving out West. What was it like working in that sector in Chicago? I would say a lot of positive things to say about that sector is uh, yeah. very meritocratic, a lot of brilliant people working in that sector. At the same time, if you're a math person, you kind of quickly realize the market making game, mm -hmm. at least, you know, last 20 or so years is very much an arms race and it's a speed race. So I would say it's much yeah. more fun for the computer science majors and the hardware <laughs> yeah. engineering majors. And, you know, it's all about the speed. So I would say a couple of years into my tenure, I was like, okay, this is fun, but I'm just trying to, you know, squeeze one extra penny and try mm -hmm. to, you know, cut down latency. So the math is not a as beautiful <laughs> yeah. percentage of a penny. So like you don't actually get to do a lot of fun math because every Everything has mm. to, you know, be fast. So I was kind of like, mm. you know, figuring out what to do next with my life when the opportunity with Hall presented itself to work mm. on something that's not as speed sensitive, but has a, has a lot of beautiful math behind it. Mm. I had a somebody on the show that's funny what you just described. He was selling like literally speed in computers for trader for people that are trading. <laughs> he was, yep. That was his that was his niche. So what you just described and this gentleman, he goes back from like the open outcry like system of like in that business. So I was like, oh my gosh! I was like, I had him do a whole like example of what it was looking like for our younger audience that don't know what that is. I'm trying to get a little bit of history here. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Let's get into Hull Tactical. So a pair up with Hull, like what drew you to the firm? Like what drew you to the firm? What drew me to the firm? I would say partially it was the reputation of the firm. So Hull Tactical was mm. founded by Blair Hall, who has been a fixture in Chicago. And I would say anywhere in the U.S., if you have ever traded an option, you probably mm -hmm. know the name. He founded a very successful company called Hall Trading. And we can, you know, talk a little more about the history of all his different businesses and investments. So I knew from the reputation that it was a very quantitative firm. They worked on mm -hmm. interesting problems and it was a well-run company. So when and I had the opportunity to join Hall, I was very excited to do so. Yeah. And now I know that they serve as an advisor to ETFs as well. Like, like talk to me about that a little bit. What does that look like? So when I first joined, this was a brand new project. So when I first joined, most of the company was focused on proprietary trading. And there was a lot of, you know, even though I said I was trying to get away from futures market making, there was mm -hmm. a significant futures market making component to the company. But at the same yeah. time, there was this kind of a new project that was developing in the corner and me being the new quant, I wanted to, you know, raise my hand and volunteer for something that was maybe a little more expensive experimental and would maybe give me a little mm -hmm. more visibility within the firm. And this project was what eventually turned into HTOS ETF. So the mm -hmm. basically the plan was that for a few years before I joined, a group of quants has been working on internal investment strategies. So as opposed to some high frequency market making strategies, these were mm -hmm. strategies that used the same kind of quantitative research, 
but were aimed at like longer term capital management. And they were looking pretty good internally. So then the plan was to develop them into an investment product that could be released to the public. And, you know, we were facing the decision, should this be a hedge fund? Should this be a, a mutual fund? Eventually, we settled on the idea of releasing these models in an ETF wrapper. And in 2015, mm. we launched the HTOS ETF. Mm. Can you go into that decision a little bit further? That's super interesting because a lot of different, and you kind of took the words out of my mouth on that one. I was like, huh, a lot with your background, obviously with Hull, like in that, you know, Hull trading and just that background, the pedigree could have launched this in a lot of different ways. Why go the ETF wrapper route? So I would say the mission of Hull Tactical is a little bit twofold. So one hmm. priority for us is to contribute to the discussion of return predictability. And this is a very lofty theoretical goal, challenging the efficient market hypothesis, mm -hmm. saying that investors can, in fact, beat the market. But the second mission of this firm is to democratize access to investment products. And we want to deliver mm. institutional quality vehicles to retail. So one of the yeah. key goals for us to make these strategies available to public. We didn't want to be limited to investors with hundreds of thousands of dollars of investable assets. We think they already have access to a lot of great strategies. So mm -hmm. we wanted to see if we could take the research that we're doing and deliver it in a wrapper that would be available to the white public. Mm. Yeah, I got that. And I got that impression. Like, and maybe, you know, some others would go this route because they kind of had to. But in this case, you, I don't think it would have been a problem to take your thesis and go to a bunch of accredited investors and raise capital. Like, I just don't, you know what I mean? Like, you're in that business. Yeah. So I think it's interesting that, and I do believe that it is a decision to try to make it available to the masses, not just for, not necessarily only for marketing and gathering assets, but just to give people maybe a an access to a strategy that like the average investor normally wouldn't have access to, like this period, if they weren't accredited investors or, you know, or if they weren't in the know, right? Am I off on that? No, you're totally correct. We think it was very interesting. We saw the ETFs even 10 years ago were already charging ahead in terms of attracting a lot of new flows. They were already taking mm -hmm. a big chunk of new market share from mutual funds. So we kind of thought as far as like retail products go, we saw the ETF as the future of retail yeah. vehicles as opposed to mutual fund. And then what we also loved about the ETF wrapper was the transparency that comes with it. If you launch mm. as a hedge fund, you publish some results monthly or quarterly. You can do a lot in the background. And we did want to contribute to this somewhat theoretical discussion about what can really be done with public information. And with ETF, having your baskets published every day. Basically, you publish every single trade you do for the ETF. The track record is really public. You know, you get daily returns. So it's really hard to do anything other than what you tell your clients you're going to do. So we love that transparency. Mm -hmm. We thought that was going to help us have a very open and honest conversation about how much value can you add by digesting all these different sources of information. Yeah, I, I totally see that. And where do you see this? And I don't know if there's more than one. And if there is, you're welcome to mention it. But specifically for HTUS ETF, how do you think this fits into the investment universe? How do you think this product fits? So the way the ETF is structured, it does have a core exposure to the S&P 500 market. Mm -hmm. So our goal is on average when the information is neither overwhelmingly positive or overwhelmingly negative to be 100% invested in the S&P 500. We think that has been a really solid strategy for most investors for a long time. And we're not challenging mm -hmm. that. But what we're saying is, you know, depending on what's happening in the market, whether that would be, you know, economic news, fundamental news, sentiment, technical news, it can be smart to be over leveraged or under leveraged with the S&P 500. So, you know, we collect 40 or so different indicators on a daily basis. And when we think it's a good time to be more invested in the market, we can go more than 100% long. And when we think it's a good time to be a little bit defensive, we can reduce our exposure and we could be all the way to 0% invested or flat. And so sort of where we think that fits is we think this is an interesting alternative to basically anybody who is looking for a long exposure to the market, because as I said, on average, we will be pretty close to 100% long, but it's also looking to 
have a active component in their portfolio. So somebody mm. who's looking for something more than just a passive investment in the S&P 500, or maybe somebody who is interested in quantitative models and hedge fund-like overlays on top of their S&P 500 exposure. Mm. Well, Petra, this has been great having you on the show today and getting to know a little bit more about HTUS ETF and also to see what you're doing over at Hull Tactical. That being said, if individuals want to follow up, learn more about the company and get more information, how do people connect with you and your team? Absolutely. We love to talk to anybody who's interested in our research or our company or our team. It's very easy to connect with us either through our advisory website, which is www.hulltactical.com. Dot com, or you can find us on LinkedIn. We try to maintain a somewhat active LinkedIn presence, or we're also at X with our handle at Hall Tactical. Fantastic. And for everybody listening, just so you know, we'll definitely put some links in the show notes so you can just click on the links and head right on over and check out Hall Tactical. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe or follow button. This is a daily show. Each and every day we're bringing you new content, new ideas, and hopefully new inspiration to help you along the way in your journey as well. So again, hit that subscribe or follow button. And Petra, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me, Adam. It was a pleasure.